Hello and welcome to this video lecture. We're continuing our discussion on machine learning with Python and scikit-learn. Uh, specifically, we're going to be talking about the lasso algorithm for model regularization, and I'll talk about that here in just a moment. All right, so the lasso algorithm, that LASSO stands for Least Absolute Shrinkage and Selection Operator. I'm not sure where that acronym came from, but I think it's this is generally just called the lasso algorithm without worrying too much about the full name. As with the uh, ordinary least squares algorithm that we talked about, uh, the basis of machine learning in this case is optimization. Specifically, we're trying to optimize the model parameters or the fitting parameters in our model so that we have a model that gives us a good estimate for uh, the outcome. So this y is our targets, uh, which is from the real data, and then y hat is the what our model estimates it should be. So we again, we want to try and close the gap between these to have a model that gets us this estimate that's as close to the real data as possible. So we still will be solving an optimization problem here with an objective function. Only now, uh, the objective function is different. So previously, in the if we're just doing ordinary least squares, the only piece of our objective function is this piece. We're just trying to minimize the sum squared error between our model and the actual data. You'll notice that now our objective function consists of two major pieces. So there's still the, the sum of squared error piece, but now there's this extra piece so that some squared error is still there. Um, we are normalizing this by the number of samples in the data set, so that's what n means. Then this other term, this is called the L1 norm, and this is specifically is the L1 norm of all the parameters. So the L1 means we're taking the absolute value, so this has a, a linear weighting in our objective function, uh, but essentially what this term does is this allows us to balance having a really precise model where it's we're getting uh, our data is aligning very very close with our model estimates sometimes you look at results of these models and you see a model that might have an r squared of one if i saw a model that had an r squared of one i would think that model has been overfit that it's unrealistic that uh, you really couldn't predict it that much so you could potentially achieve a model with r squared one if you have just a very, very high number of model parameters. So you don't want to have a high number of, number of model parameters. That leads you to something called overfitting. So real world data, typically you would not expect R squareds approaching that close to one. Um, so what this model does, this, uh, this lasso algorithm allows us to balance these two terms. So on the right, we're favoring uh, this, this pushes us toward the direction of having a simpler model with fewer features and fewer parameters. And on the left, this pushes us toward having a model that is very precise. And we balance those two terms uh, with this alpha tuning parameter. So uh, this is something that the data scientist or the engineer would be kind of adjusting. There would be some trial and error here typically where you might say, hmm, my, my initial model using ordinary least squares is too complex. I want to simplify it, get rid of some of these features and some of these parameters. So you might switch to a lasso algorithm with a penalty term, and so you might ratchet up that penalty term and look at the results to see that you're getting a model that, that balances simplicity with uh, preciseness. So the other way of thinking of this L1 norm of parameters, this is a penalty term that penalizes your objective function for having a lot of features. So uh, you could have a very complex model if you're just dealing with features that are uh, polynomial in nature. So like x1, x1 squared, x1 times x2, x2 squared. Again, this list could go on. You could have a lot of different permutations depending on the degree of polynomial that you're trying to fit a model to. But you want to be able to identify which of these features have the biggest statistical impact on your model. So let's just go back to the same example that we've been covering. If you uh, want to follow along, you can find a link to the data set in the video, uh, in the video description. Uh, but then I'm also going to be walking you through code via a Jupyter Notebook. So here's my Jupyter Notebook. I'm going to step through this like I've been stepping through the others. At the top, we are just importing all the different toolboxes that we need. I won't go over these again with the exception of this one. So from the sklearn toolbox, we're going to import this tool called LASSO, capital L-A-S-S-O. 
we're still going to read in our data from the CSV file. It's the same data set we've been using in prior videos. Uh, just as a refresher, let's look at the plotted relationship. So y versus x1 looks relatively linear, but uh, a lot of variance in the data. y versus x2 looks a little bit more quadratic or nonlinear at least. Still a lot of variance in the data. y versus x3, there's not a really clear relationship here, so we don't exactly know how y relates to x3, and it's it's difficult to tell looking at this uh, single input, looking at x3 as a single input. So we want to find a model that helps us reduce the amount of variance, and more specifically, we want to find a model with a high R squared, which means that our model explains a lot of the variance. And you can tell that a model explains a lot of the variance, not only by having a high R squared value, but if when you look at the parity plot, you see that the uh, model predictions versus the actual data follow a line follow along a, a line um, this 45 degree line okay so here we are going to uh, just load our data like we've done before we're still using a second order polynomial and we'll look at what kind of features this generates so this generates a whole bunch of features so we have this one which you can kind of disregard then we've got these nine different features with all the different possible permutations going up to a second order polynomial. We could make our model even more complex. I'll just show you real quick by making this a third degree polynomial and look at all the different features. So you wouldn't want to deal with a model that's this complicated and odds are none of these, or, or the majority of these relationships are not statistically meaningful. So we'll just, we're gonna keep this simpler and just do a second degree polynomial. Again, in the world of machine learning, I would say a general rule of thumb is that simpler is better. If you have a model with fewer features and requires fewer inputs, but it still produces a, a, an adequate level of accuracy, uh, you should probably go with that model. All right, so we're dealing with a second order mo um, polynomial model. We divide our data up into training and testing data, again, using testing data of 20%, and this train test split will do that for us randomly. It randomly picks out 20% to call the training data, or sorry, to call the testing data. The other 80% is the training data. So we have changed this line of code. So rather than using the linear regression algorithm, now we're using lasso. And we are, remember that alpha from before was our tuning parameter. So alpha here is a tuning parameter. So I've set this to be uh, 0 0.5. Um, but realistically, I mean, I goofed around with this before to, <laughs> to make sure what this, what a higher value of alpha is going to do is it is going to um, make this term more important. So it's going to try and minimize these terms. It's going to, it's going to try and make all of your coefficients smaller so you can weed out features that are not important. That does have an effect on your uh, sum of squared error and your R squared value. So typically, if you want to push this scale more toward a, a high alpha penalty term, um, then that means you're going to suffer in terms of the model accuracy part. And so what you might do is use an algorithm like lasso uh, iteratively, where you maybe have a smaller value of alpha, you run it, you see which coefficients are not meaningful, you pull the corresponding features out of your data set, and then you try it again. And so you do this iteratively, and then at the end I would recommend working with an alpha function that is just zero. So then with the features that you found to be statistically important through this weeding out process, you then refit and then find the optimal uh, set of parameters to give you the best model, the, the best fit with the selected features. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and run this. So let's evaluate our model, we're looking at um, we do produce a 0.97 R squared, so still a very good model, explaining 97% of the variance in our training data. And it's still very high, just a hair below that in our testing data. So this seems like it's still quite an accurate model. Let's look at our parity plot to be sure. So our parity plot shows, yeah, we're, we're lining up. There still is a lot of noise in this data, some unexplained variance, but you can see we're capturing it pretty well in this model. We can go now and look, do this bar chart of our model coefficients and see, yeah, this drove a lot of our model coefficients down to be very close to zero. So we can conclude from this that 
x2 as a feature is probably not meaningful. x1 squared as a feature is probably not meaningful. x1 times x2, again, probably not meaningful, um, as well as x1 times x3, x3 squared. But there's, there is a tuning that takes place where you're kind of playing around with the value of alpha. And just as a note here, if you need to actually extract what your model is, um, at any point, remember it follows that same format that I showed in the slide. So it follows this format, or however, actually, let me, I'll go back to the code on this, up here where we printed out all of our features. So you would match up these features with the model coefficients, and you can extract those with your model name. Mine is just model.1, and I believe this is just, I'm probably going to, do this wrong, but um, yeah. Oh, just one F in there. So I can go and I can just print out these model coefficients and it'll tell me what these are. So there should be a corresponding model coefficient for each feature. Uh, notice this zero. Um, you, you need to make sure that you're getting the model intercept separately. so that you know where your model intercept is. That's the W0 uh, parameter. So that is regularization in a nutshell. Um, again, my recommendation would be identify these features that don't appear to be statistically important because they kind of just go away. Then remove those as features and refit your model until you get to the point where your alpha is just zero. And when your alpha is just zero, then the lasso algorithm becomes exactly equivalent to the ordinary least squares algorithm.